My name is David Caldwell, and with almost two decades of experience in the Portland metro area real estate market and a passion for data-driven insights, I'm here to bring you the latest trends, advice, and stories from the world of real estate. Whether you're buying, selling, or just love staying informed about the market, this podcast is your one-stop source for expert insights and personal perspectives. So let's dive in and ask the all-important question, how's the Portland real estate market? Today, we're going to recap the 2023 Portland metro area housing market. When you think of 2023, you think about the real estate market we experience, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? For me, I just, just like it's kind of felt like for me that it just stopped. Like we went from selling to just kind of a lot of unease, a lot of uncertainty, and a lot of fear. That, that's that's what I think of 2023. Yeah. For, for me, oddly enough, if you've watched this, I think some people would think, oh, David's so pessimistic, although I've tried to just tell the truth. Um, I think, you know, the market was resilient. Mm-hmm. Now, we had, you know, I think most most of the ways that people would categorize the health of a real estate market would be two things. The amount of people buying and selling real estate mm-hmm. and what happened with value. So they go up or down. And we had our first down year in more than a decade for values. Yep. And we had a big down year for sales volume. We had the lowest number of sales in 11 years. So it was a bad year. But the market was surprisingly resilient when you think about, are, are we in a recession? Or are we not? That's a headline, right? Mm-hmm. Is the economy good? Is it bad? That's the headline. Um, but the reality was we had the worst affordability that we've had in 40 years. Mm-hmm. At one point, we had 8% interest rates. And for the year, we averaged somewhere in the sixes, which we still have. So we'll have to get some commentary on that. But the market was surprisingly resilient. You know, my favorite thing to say for the last, you know, two years, 24 months, is the Portland metro areas had 26 years of appreciation in the last 30. And now I have to say, 25 years in the last 30 because in 2023 the most important question the question we get the most when people say how's the market what are they really asking what happened with my value Mm -hmm. the average home seller sold for less the average home buyer bought for less in 2023 than 2022 and that number was a 2.1 percent decrease from six hundred and ten thousand nine hundred dollars in 2023 to five hundred and ninety-eight thousand dollars, the median sales price dropped three percent from five forty-eight four hundred to five thirty-two. That's resilient when you think about all the negative things that happened, the fear, the uncertainty that you were talking about. So you know that's what comes to mind for me is when we zoom out on housing, it always looks like a beautiful investment, right? You buy a house in twenty twenty-three. Even 2022, if you lost some value, if you held, if you hold on to that property for a decade, you will perceive yourself as a genius. Yes. And that's where it's a lot of people have to remember. I mean, it's even with the stock market, what goes up must come down and things will go back up. So, I mean, and 2%, I think you're right. The resiliency of everything we saw last year, 2% is nothing. It's nothing. You know, when you look, I because I just did this math a little bit earlier, so it's fresh. When you look at the last 30 years with five years of depreciation, the average rate of return over that 30 years is 5.6%. You know, housing, owning real estate, something that's changed my life, I, I believe ch- probably changed my family tree. Mm-hmm. It's something I want everyone to be able to participate in. And I want people, you know, if I could inject any advice to people is zooming out always when looking at real estate. We got to zoom in when we look for opportunities, but we need to zoom out when we think about real estate as an asset. So let's talk about some of the reasons why, right? Um, Mortgage rate. Yes. Just tell me like your client experience, your experience just watching mortgage rates in the last 12 months. We knew, we knew they were going to go up, right? Everyone has slated. I remember the end of 2022, we're like, hey, if you're looking to buy, it's perceived that interest rates are going to start to go up and maybe like this more towards like the end of the first quarter, beginning of second quarter. Well, if memory serves, they started going up sooner than that and they went up more than expected and then held. 
So when that happened, everyone was like, first it started to happen. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till they go down. I'm going to wait till they go down. Then they just kept creeping up. And so then for me, it felt like people just kind of stopped because like, I can't afford now because the prices have aren't coming down enough and the interest rates are still coming up that now people are losing their affordability. You know, people are just either have to buy something less, which is really hard to do after you've been looking up here. Now you have to go, go down here. That's a hard pill to swallow. So there's a lot of wait and sees until I think people finally became like, OK, this is here to stay for a while. I better just buy. And so for me, I know towards the end of the year where, pe where people kind of made their peace with what the rates were, that they started to buy again. And then the 2-1 yeah. buy downs really came into play as well. Yeah, well, I think people can only delay their plan for so long. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the reality, right? Um, we had the lowest number of closed sales dating back to the Great Recession, only a little bit better than those recessionary years. I guess we'll just talk about it right now since I brought it up. You know, from a closed sales perspective, we had 20,941 closed sales this year. You know, what's it normally look like to see closed sales in, 20, in 2022? 28,000. So we had, you know, uh, 7,000 short. 2021, best year ever for closed sales, mm -hmm. 35,000. So we're 14,000 short. 2020, 32,000. So we're like 11,000 closed sales short. That, by the way, that's 50% of how many we closed this year. 2019, 29,700. We're 9,000 short. So, you know, there's this question around interest rates, right? Interest rates are what held sales backwards. All the headlines right now, and remember, headlines normally aren't true. Yeah. <laughs> Clickbait. Uh, the Fed's going to cut rate X amount of times. So the Fed can cut rates by a quarter of a point, and it'll probably mean absolutely nothing to the real estate market. Mm -hmm. Because throughout last year, the Fed also raised rates, right? So I'm expecting, as long as we have mortgage interest rates with a six, more of the same. Now, what's this mean if you're a buyer where you can afford to buy a house? It means the ability to negotiate, mm -hmm. because certainly 2023 was the year of the buyer, right? The sellers didn't have as much leverage. So if there's homes out there that you like, it's going to be the year, I think 2024 will probably repeat itself as the year of the buyer, even if we have some market appreciation towards the end of the year, if interest rates come back to that affordable place. Um, you know, looking at mortgage rates, I believe the problems mortgage rates gave us in 2023, they won't be as bad in 2024, but I believe mortgage interest rates will continue to give us problems. And you can um, discount everything I'm saying once interest rates hit that 5% level. But until interest rates hit that 5% level, I believe it's impossible for us to have more than 25,000 sales. Well, isn't it historically accurate to that with an election year, right? That's when we start to see interest rates have gone down, gas prices have gone down in an election year. So that also might be on a buyer side, potentially. Yeah. But also would be great for sellers because if it does get to that 5%, then we're probably going to start seeing mayhem again with people jumping back into the market and getting multiple offers. And that would up appreciation, obviously. And I think the mayhem gets thrown around a little bit too much because I do really like where do mortgage payments need to be mm -hmm. for there to be mayhem? Yeah. The average mortgage payment probably has to be around $2,500. Yeah. And we are about $1,000 away from that on average yeah. right now. So that's a big, that's a big correction. So let's look at listings and pending sales because those are so important. When we look at the number of new listings that came to the market in 2023, there were 29,689. Now when we zoom out, that's a big deficit. 2022, 36,000, 2021, 40,000, 2020, 38,000, 2019, 40,000. But we had the highest inventory in 2023 that we've had in really like, let's probably, if we average it out, I don't know exactly, but it's probably going to be 10 years because of so few buyers buying. Remember the number 29,989. That's how many people said, I want to sell my house, sign in the yard. 
20,941 went pending. So for all the real estate agents out there saying the market's hot and it's really good and it's healthy and we're awesome, like what do you say to those 9,000 homes that didn't sell? <laughs> I mean, we were talking about that, you know, before we got on this call when I was driving back to the office is that is so ignored, mm -hmm. right? But what do you say to those people? You say nothing if you don't understand what's going on in the market. If someone doesn't want to adjust their price of their home to sell it, don't, right? Like, but don't put those people through that process, right? Or be honest with them that the market's adjusted and their expectations have it. And that's okay. But that's the widest gap that we've seen between new listings and pending sales in some time. You know, when we look at pendings, those numbers we talked about with solds, they mirror them. I mean, last year, there were 7,000 more pending sales in 2022 than 2023. And you know what? Resiliency, right? That should be the, the word of the year for the Portland real estate market. Mm -hmm. Despite having 7,000 less sales, home values only lost 2%. Now, are we going to have a 20% drop next year? Absolutely not. But some of those 9,000 people that failed to sell this year will come back to the market in 2024, albeit at lower prices or an updated home, a better conditioned home to try to achieve yeah. the sale. Or just a better mental attitude with, hey, I'm going to have to do some repairs. I'm going to have to offer some closing costs. You know, coming with the attitude, we're not in the COVID era where... I don't have to do anything, right? Yeah. Sometimes I think it's just a mental attitude that sellers have to get on the same page. Yeah. Okay. So here's a question. I want to give some advice while we summarize some numbers. So when we look at 2023 versus 2022, we saw 29,689 new listings. Do you think that number is going to go up or down and why? For new listings? Uh -huh. Ooh, that's a good question. What do you think? I believe we will see an increase in listings next year. Uh, one reason why is we started to see the amount of homes coming to sale in the second part of the year match 2022. We started to see an increase. So you see, you're I saying an increase in 2024. Sorry, 2024. We're, yeah, have more we're now there. The so this year. Okay. Yeah, this year. 2024. I think we'll have more listings come to the market. Um, how much more? 10, 15, 20%, I'm, I'm not sure. Wouldn't surprise me to see 35,000 listings come to the market because a percentage of the people that failed to sell last year will retry yeah. this year, as well as the normal people that would just have to make those life transitions this year. Well, and also, with, I mean, are you including new construction or are you just thinking of resale? I mean, that, that includes new construction. Yeah, because I say new construction is, is still very much like popping up everywhere, right? All, all around the, you know, Portland metro area. Lots and lots of new neighborhoods. And let's just make a new construction comment. Yeah. If you are a home buyer, new construction, they are professional home sellers. One, we'd love to represent you and talk to you about what it looks like to buy new construction because we're proficient in that. But also you could just look at their listing descriptions right now and kind of have a take a judgment on how the market is in any given area. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of builders, the first couple sentences of their listing description is what they're willing to offer a buyer to make mortgage costs more proficient. Mm -hmm. And they will not offer that if they do not have to. Correct. So if you want to get if you want to get a little bit of insider knowledge, and maybe you're a real estate professional, you never thought about that you're welcome. Um, but that's where you can see a little bit of the market. Let's let's talk about pending sales. Okay. 21,363 pending sales, a 20.4% decrease from last year, which was also a down year from normal. Mm -hmm. Do you think we see more pending sales or less? Uh, I feel like it's going to stay same to a little bit more. Just with interest agree, rates I, I, coming down. I don't think yeah. it's going to be super crazy higher. Like, oh, there's going to be a lot more. But I think it could be about the same or a little bit more with interest rates staying lower. Now, if for some reason interest rates spike back up, then no. Be less. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call 
my same prediction for 2023. I thought there'd be 25,000 mm-hmm. pending sales. Like Krista, it's going to be interest rate dependent. If we see a number, an average mortgage rate in the sixes for the duration of 2024, and by the way, election years have a tendency to be down years for sales volume as well. I'm going to, I'm going to guess 25 to 27,000 pending sales. So if you're a seller, what's the good news in that? The good news is there might be a higher probability of selling your house if we're right. Closed sales, we saw them decrease 25.2% to 20,941. Increase or decrease, I think we know the answer because we just talked about pending sales, but let's just get it out there. Yeah, so obviously more, right? Marginally. Yeah, marginally. Yeah. So let's just give some advice. Like it's January. I set this New Year's resolution. I'm going to buy real estate this year. I'm going to sell real estate and buy. Mm-hmm. I want to sell and buy, but maybe the market conditions aren't so good. You know, let's just focus real quick on buyers. Mm-hmm. And what advice would we give to buyers, both from, you know, two real estate professionals that have been doing this since we were in our 20s and now we're in our 40s? Mm-hmm. We've been doing it for a while. And uh, being homeowners for a long time, both of us, mm-hmm. um, and just like what what would what would we what would we say to buyers right now to think about going into the year? So buyer, I mean, obviously, first thing like talk to besides talking to a real estate professional is talking to a mortgage broker, right? Sitting down and figuring out your finances for a year. People are now are starting to get everything ready for their taxes and things like that. Um, You know, people, a lot of people kind of wait until they get their refunds right for their down payments. So I would say it's get get your ducks in a row. Right. Get prepared, figure out financially what you want to do, um, what you can afford and and start looking if if you're serious about it. Because, I mean, buyers, you have opportunity right now, as you're saying, to get get those incentives. And the minute that maybe interest rates drop even more, those incentives might go away. Yeah. So it's really about what makes sense for you, but getting your ducks in a row, talk to a mortgage broker, talk to your real estate professional. Yeah. I, I've i been saying this, like I want to be a buyer in a marketplace where there's multiple homes on the market for mm-hmm. me. And a lot of times this year, when we look at how many homes are on the market, there were 4,000, 4,500 homes and there'd be 2,000 homes that went pending that much. So if all things were equal, there's two homes on the market for every buyer. Uh, there's been price points that we've worked in for our sellers where when we look, there's like seven homes on the market for every home going pending in a, in a week. Mm-hmm. And that's a great place to be a buyer. Does it mean everyone's going to give you a deal? No, but someone will. And you will have right? options. So you have options and, and options are, are great for a buyer. Zooming out, right? In the last 25 of 30 years, and really, because I have data since 1992, mm-hmm. it's more than that, but 25 of 30 years, we've had home price appreciation. Do the odds, right? Like we haven't talked about what we think is going to happen with average sales price next year. It might compress a little bit, right? It might go up. We we don't know, but the odds are over a 10-year period of owning real estate, at the end of that decade, you'll be very, very happy with your investment. So judge the real estate asset on the long term, the value of ownership, the average net worth of a homeowner is 40 times greater than that of a renter. If you're somebody who's thinking about holding up buying for to buy at the bottom, mm. like think about these things that we're saying right now. It's better buying conditions where you can negotiate. The, the, the person who won the transaction most often in 2023 in the negotiation was the buyer. So let's transition to sellers. What advice would you have for sellers? Prep your home, make your home the prettiest on the market. Like look at your competition, know what else is out there. Have your real estate agent should be telling you the average days on market, should be telling you the things you need to do to get your house ready, right? What's going to set you apart and make you different? Um, Yes. One of the, and honestly, like one of the things we did last year that, that was great is I had a listing and it made more sense to advertise uh, closing costs than lower the price of the home. We did that, right? We put put it on the cover. Hey, we're offering you closing costs. Two we- this house sat on the market for sixty days. Two weeks later, we had multiple offers, right? And it's 
we ended up getting more rather than lowering the price of the home we offered closing costs because that made more of a financial difference for the buyers so sellers you really also need to be in tune with buyers needs so that we can advertise to that to get your home sold yeah you know there i was i had my head down because i was looking for an article and i couldn't find it but i saw a headline yesterday and we were talking about headlines probably aren't true but this headline was something like 49% of the real estate professionals in America sold one house or less, according to our MLS data. If we just did some simple math, there's 21,000 sales in Portland last year, just shy of, and there's something like 10,000 realtors in Portland. If you are a seller, hire someone who has a track record of success. You know, we sold 102 homes last year. That doesn't mean we can't pay attention to you. That means we know how to adjust and pivot, mm -hmm. right? You want to hire someone who's proficient in this craft, and it is a craft. And what do we know? We know that according to you know large surveys, most people just hire their friend. Yeah. And we're friendly, like we're fully willing to be your friend. Um, we're also willing to help you create the best strategy to actually take advantage of the asset that you had or, or have. We want, it, we want it to be the asset you had. Uh, take advantage of the asset you have and transfer that equity. I know that people move. We have these Hillshire Realty Group shirts that say live better. Why do they say live better? That's why people move, right? You, you don't move to lower your quality of life. You move to better it. And sometimes it's a different marketing strategy. Sometimes it's working with someone who has a better understanding of the market that actually gets you to that successful sale. If interest rates stay in the six and a half percent range, don't listen to your friends on Instagram saying how hot the market is. We just had the worst real estate market in Portland in 10 years. It's interesting, too, because there's been a lot of people that got into real estate, right, like in 2020 and 2021 and have never really seen, even in like 2015, have really never seen a down market. And for some, like us who got in 2005, 2006, where we started and, hey, oh, look, the Great Recession <laughs> hit, right? Um, we had to pivot. We had to learn. We had to learn about short sales. So I talked to a lot of realtors and I'm like, I just don't know what to do because I've never experienced this before. I'm like, oh, well, we survived one of the worst downturns. We're here. This is not one of the worst downturns. We know how to pivot. We've experienced this. We've been through it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about that house. I sold a property earlier this year. I was the third listing agent. I listed, I took the listing on the market at the same price that the previous agent had had it on the market for a couple of weeks. When you just walked into the house, it was cold. Yeah. The photography yeah. wasn't great. It wasn't showing the best assets of that home with a little bit of staging, with some creativity and photography that actually showcased where this house was and what it looked like. You know, there were multiple offers. And the property went pending. They all didn't come in over the same time. We said no to a couple of them because this house had this horrific track record of being on the market for a really long time. Right. But you also need an agent that's going to help you say no to a bad offer when there's confidence a better one could come and vice versa. Maybe you think an offer is bad, but it's not so bad given what's going on in the market. And you can still reject that offer. But, you know, my my belief as a professional real estate agent, someone who coaches real estate agents and speaks on podcasts and speaks at real estate conferences, is the average real estate professional can't tell you if the market's going up, down, or sideways, <laughs> which is why we do this show. So um, that's our buyer and seller advice. Yeah. What, what should we close it out with, Krista? If you are looking to buy or sell in 2024, I just want to talk about your specific area because some areas showed a, pre showed a little bit of appreciation where others didn't, right? So every area is specific. So if you want specific advice for you, your situation, your family, reach out. We're happy just to talk about it. Yeah. In a non-sales pitchy type of way. And that's actually yeah. a good thing to point out. We have all these cities in the Portland metro area, mm -hmm. but the MLS categorizes them mm -hmm. into 12 areas, basically 12 major markets that we work. Tiger, Twalton, Sherwood, Wilsonville is considered one market as an example. But of those 12 markets, 10 saw depreciation. 
But in one of those markets, Tiger Twelfth and Sherwood Wilsonville, there was a appreciation in some cities and depreciation in others. Some neighborhoods perform better than others. Real estate is highly local. Mm -hmm. The timing of real estate, of selling it, makes a difference. What's your active competition look like? You need a strategy. So to Krista's point, we would love to talk to you about real estate. If you have questions, uh, concerns, you want a strategic plan for 2024, you know, it's having a goal and a strategy is really important in selling your real estate in challenging years. And don't let anyone tell you that it wasn't a challenging year. Buying and selling real estate is highly emotionally complex. It isn't as easy as it gets made out to be. There are easy transactions, but we're in a marketplace that's complicated right now, and it's increased the probability of a difficult transaction. Good. All right. Email us at hello at hilltirerealtygroup.com, and we'll see you next time.